praise Hallelujah. the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. I hope. Let's give God praise in yes. the house. Yes. He is a good God. Amen. He's a marvelous God. Amen. He's wonderful. Amen. He has blessed Amen. us. He has kept us. Oh, magnify the Lord yes. with me. Yes. And yes. let us exalt his name Thank together. You, We're getting ready to get our service started on today. And we want you to just let go and let God. So we're going to have our opening selection, and then we will have our scripture reading by Reverend Thompson and our morning prayer by Minister Wright. <laughs> I know Jesus is my everything If I'm bound by trouble, He is my release He shines on my pathway and my joys increase He's the King Almighty and the Prince of Peace Jesus is my everything Word do I hope. 
My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from that iniquity. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into the throne of grace this morning, Lord God. Giving you praise, giving you glory, giving you honor, Lord God. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord God. A day, Father God, that we've never seen before, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, that when you woke us this morning, Father God, we knew it was you, Lord God, that woke us, Father God. Not the alarm clock, not our spouse, not nobody, but you, God. And Father God, we thank you for that. And Father, we worship you this day, Father yes, God, in your holiness, Lord God. Yes. We worship you, Father God, because, Father God, you are magnificent, Lord God. You are an awesome God. We worship you this morning, Lord God, because you are God and God all by yourself. Father, we worship you this morning, Lord God, Father God, because we can come unto the throne of grace, Lord God. We can come into your presence, Father God, and know that you hear us, Lord God. And Father, we thank you right now, Father God, and as we come before for you this morning, Father God. Father God, we ask you, Father God, that anything that's not like you, Father God, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to stop it at the door right now. That it does not come in, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Father God, to let your Holy Spirit just take take over in this place, Father God. Father God, go from breast to breast, heart to heart, Lord God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, why are you doing that, Lord God? Those that are troubled in that spirit, Lord God, help them to look to you, Father God. Father God, God, the author and finisher of their faith, Father God. Father God, you told us to trust in you, Father God. And Father God, help them to look to you, Lord God, because, Father God, they've got to know, Father God, that nothing happens unless that you allow it, Lord God. And Father, we thank you right now for protecting us, yes, keeping us, Lord. Father God. Father God, keeping us in our minds, Lord God, our bright minds, Lord God. And Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, I lift up this nation before you, a nation that's in turmoil, Lord God. But Father God, we know, Father God, that you're in control, Father God, because you are the controller, Lord God. Father God, we know, Father God, that you can do all things but fail, Lord God. So Father, as we come before you this morning, having that conversation with you, Lord God, we know, Father God, you're going to do all things, Father God. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for your strength this day, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that we cannot do nothing, Lord God, yes, without you. Yes. So, Father, we're asking you to help us, Father God, to overcome the things, Father God, that we cannot handle ourselves, Lord yes, God. Father God, help us, Father God, Father God, to look to you, Father God, yes, more than anything, Father God, to call upon your holy name, Father God. Father God, we know when we call the name of Jesus, we are praying to you, Lord God. Because you know everything, Father God. And Father, we ask you, Father God, to stop by the hospitals and nursing home, Father God, the prisons and the middle of the Father God, they need you, Lord God. Father God, they need you. If it's healing, you're the healer. If it delivers you, the deliverer. Yes. So do yes. just what you said you would do, Lord God. Father God, this, Father God, I ask you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. But then I ask you, Father God, to touch our pastors, Lord. Touch the choir. Father God, touch our musicians in a mighty way. Our yes. usher, yes. Father God. Touch everyone, Lord God, under the sale of my voice. And Father God, whatever they stand in the need of, do it for them. Holy Spirit, have that on way this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Good morning. We have a card this morning. Well, special thanks to you all. To know you is to know people who are kind, considerate, and thoughtful. To know you is to be grateful for the special things you do, for everything you've done, for being the special people that you are. Thank you so very much. 
Thank you all for all of your cards and prayers. Virginia Smith and girls, and this was sent from to the outreach ministry of Ebenezer. All academic achievements are due today. Recognitions will be next Sunday during morning worship. Please remember to check the bulletin boards for upcoming events from our sister churches, as well as events from local communities. Please remember to utilize the food pantry located in the fellowship hall. This service is for others as well as yourself if needed. We are blessed to be a blessing, so let's remember to bless those in need. Join us via Zoom or phone weekly. Bible study on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Virtual prayer on the second Wednesday of each month at 6 p.m. Sunday school on Sundays at 10 a.m. and live on Zoom. Children's Sunday School at 10 a.m. and Children's Church doing morning worship for ages four and up. If you are unable to attend, catch worship on Sundays live on Facebook and YouTube. Watch anytime on YouTube and Facebook. Please remember to contribute to the Back to School Supply Drive for the upcoming school year to ensure there is enough for everyone. That is, notebook paper, number two pencils, ink pens, crayons, glue sticks, composition notebooks, pencil sharpeners, folders, and boxes of tissues. Um, thank you all, all those who have already um, committed and brought in supplies. And there's also sheets in the vestibule if you can't remember what items we need. Missionary Circle number four will meet next Sunday, immediately following morning worship in the choir room. The Ebenezer Men's Ministry is hoping of hosting a men's conference this Saturday, July the 20th at 10 a.m. The theme is Iron Sharpen Sharpening Iron, Amen. Growing Together, Proverbs 27, verse 17. The guest speakers are Reverend Antonio Myler, pastor of Shaco Baptist Church in Java, Virginia, and Reverend Steve Wilson, pastor of Crossword, Crossroads Baptist Church in South Boston, Virginia. All men are encouraged to invite other men to share in this session. The Spirit of Norfolk Gospel Cruise for August has been postponed. New dates and information will be discussed at a later time. Cedar Grove Missionary Baptist Association. There will not be a session for July. This time will be used to prepare prepare for the 158th annual session in August. The 127th Lot Carey annual session will be taking place in Memphis, Tennessee from August 12th through 15th. This event held in, is held in the hometown of our esteemed president, Reverend Dr. Gina Stewart, and is centered around the theme, Proclaim drawn from Mark 16, 15th directory to share the gospel globally. This year's session is particularly mon monumentous as Dr. Stewart will be passing the presidential baton to Reverend Dr. Jesse T. Williams. All pastors and churches are encouraged to contribute significantly to the special offering for Lot Carey again this year. This offering is to benefit Lot Carey missions, and the funds will be presented to Lot Carey during the annual session in Memphis. Continue to pray for the bereaved families. The Johnson family, the passing of Thomas Johnson, Jr., the son of Reverend Thomas Johnson, Sr., the Hunt and Brakeley family, the passing of James Hunt, the Southern family, the passing of Annie Mae Southern. The service will be held this afternoon here at Ebenezer at 2 p.m. Pray for the caregivers who provide for those, for the needs of those who are unable to care for themselves. Pray for our sick and shut-in, Reverend William Hunt, Lou Ethel Sidney, Barry Ruffin, Virginia Smith, Tony Warden, Hattabel Wilson, St. Clair Robinson, Billy Ingram, Maddie Cunningham, 
Melissa Stevens, Mary Adams, Yvonne Owens, Yolanda Warden, Patricia Jones, Mary Farrell, Clyde Chandler, Alice Chandler, Florence Hodnett, Melissa Stevens, Lachelle Spells, Danielle Doby Walton, Sharice Jones, Dr. David Bracken, Joyce Gibson, Holly Penix, Jamon King, Warren Hardy, Dorothy Daniels, Olivia White, Deborah Stevens, Bobby Annette Pritchett, George Hashton Jr., Janiqua Jones, Margie Dickerson, Sheldon Smith, Malachi James, Tanya Barker, Kevin Barker, Barbara Campbell, Gloria Boxley Brown, Rosa Lee, Valerie Bow, Adrian Cheek, Brian Davis, Donna Compton, Sydney Gray, Estelle Pinchback, Lee Smith, Elise Belcher, Nanny Moore, David White, John White, Patricia Clayton, Tempest Stevens, Mary Hatchett, Shelby Early, Hurley and family, Nancy Edmonds, Angela Fry, Hattie Jeffries, Carol Swan, Dorothy Liscombe, Danny Jeffries, Reverend Boyd Harrison, Elder Robin Harrison, Tony Wilson, Andrew Knight, Ernestine Holiness, Freeman Ingram, Gail Saunders, Clyde Davis, Edward Ross, and Constance Covington. Continue to pray for our pastor and her family. Pray for the Ebenezer Church family and its ministries, teachers, parents, and children. Pray for each other, this nation, the president, and the upcoming election. Prayer is nothing else than being on terms of friendship with God. Thought for the week. What you are is God's gift to you. What you become is your gift to God. And now we'll have our offertory appeal and prayer by Deacon Richard Williams. Good morning, Ebenezer. How y'all doing? Good morning. Good morning. I want to, um, since this is my first time being before y'all since my wife passed, I want to tell y'all, some of them I already told the story to, but I want to tell you a quick story. Um, either when my sister Sybil died or was daddy, I came in the house and I said, Mama, I don't see nobody from Ebenezer. Mom said, don't worry, they come. And got later on, I said, Mama, they ain't got here yet. Said, Don't worry, they coming. And when my wife passed May the 5th. I'm looking at the door, I said, Help me, these ain't got here yet. And before long, here they come. In a line, like, like ants in a line going, from, here, <laughs> here they come, here they come. And boy, when it got in the, in the den in there, Ebenezer lined all the way up around the room. I, I, that just made me think about that. Here it comes. So I'm saying to Ebenezer, keep doing what you're doing. God. Thank God for you, because that, in that times like that, that Lord, that's just fill you, fill you up and get your mind off a lot of things. So Ebenezer, keep doing what you're doing. Um, on another Point. I want to say this while I can is that y'all, when they pass and others have said earlier, pray for this nation because we all know what happened yesterday. And it's a sad thing when this happens like this. And it is, it is, it is just killing and death. It's just so close to home here now. You used to hear about this over in other lands and other places. But this is, this is very a sorrowful time for us. And it shows us that the end times is getting close. I'm, t I'm telling you it is. It really is. Okay, now without further ado, let's hold our offerings up. I already put mine in there. We're going to give God thanks for his many wonderful blessings. Father, it's in Jesus' name we come to give you thanks one more time, Lord. You're able us to come here and give like we're supposed to give. 
We thank you, Lord, for you, your many wonderful blessings. We thank you for just being so good to us, Lord. Thank you for this Sunday school lesson we had this morning that shows that, Lord, we're asking you just to direct our path, Lord, and, and, and that's our life. And Lord, we ask you to be with us this morning. We ask you to bless us and keep us safe. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Everybody on the left, y'all's right side, please stand. Father, us just around. <laughs> We're so grateful for everyone that is gathered here on today. Got a few things we want to um, touch on. Uh, I do want to add another name to our bereavement list. Um, Brother Kevin Glass, his aunt was funeralized on yesterday. Her name is Joylette Vereen. So we need to pray for that family as well. Also, we want to uh, keep in mind that today, Sister Oni Mae Southern will be funeralized here at Ebenezer at 2 o'clock. Those who can and will, if you would, please uh, try to be present to support the family. At 2 p.m. here at Ebenezer, she will be buried in Yanceville after the service. Men's uh, ministry, next Saturday, is the men's conference. Amen? Amen. Iron sharpens iron. And so we are looking forward to this, uh, this beautiful day as we have two great men of God coming to uh, minister on that day, Reverend Steve Wilson from Crossroads Baptist Church. And then there is um, Reverend Antonelle Myler of Shaco Baptist Church. So we're looking forward to a high time in the Lord on Saturday. All right. Um, also, next Sunday, accomplishments. If you haven't turned that in, we need it in today. All accomplishments, all academic accomplishments, graduate information, we need that in today so that we'll be able to present it on next Sunday, the 21st. Please do not miss giving that information and then get mad when the name is not called. Amen? Amen. All right. And so we want to encourage you to also be a part of Bible study and Sunday school. Um, that's how you're going to grow. Yeah. 
If you are attending Bible study and Sunday school, that's how you grow. You learn more about the Lord. And, and the more you learn about him, the closer you can get to him. Amen? Amen. So we want to make sure that you are making the effort to make your way uh, out to Sunday school or call in, log in so that you can watch it. And then also on Wednesday nights, call in or log in on Zoom so that you can hear the Bible study lessons. So without further ado, we're going to turn it over to worship team. And then I want you to turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Your pathway, your pathway, yeah. Lord. I 
don't want. Shadow of death, me I will fear no evil. For oh, thou Lord. art with me, for oh, thou Lord. art with me. me thou rod and thou staff, all oh, comfort me, all oh, comfort me. I say, Lord, I stress, Lord, my hand to thee. No other help I know, no other help say, Oh, oh, keep me in your path. Way, Lord, keep me in your path. Way, Lord, oh, oh, keep me in your path. Way, Lord, keep me in your path. Way, one more time. Oh, 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 keep me in your path. Way, Lord, keep me in your path. Way, Lord, I say keep. Keep me in your path. Way, Lord, I say keep. Lord, I want you to keep me. Lord, I need you to keep me. You said you would keep me. Keep me in your perfect peace. Keep me in your perfect peace. If my mind is staying, Lord, stay on me. Lord, stay on me. Lord, keep my mind. Lord, keep my mind. Lord, keep my mind. Lord, say, oh, oh, oh. Sunday school this morning, we, we talked about remaining in conversation with God. And that song we just sung, that should be a part of our daily conversation. Keep me. David said, preserve me, O Lord. So we got to ask God to keep us in his pathway. With your Bibles open, 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to read two verses today, verses 16 and 17, and I'm going to read New Living Translation. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17, New Living Translation, and it reads, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true 
and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Let us bow our heads. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, Lord, that we're able to come together on today in corporate worship. We pray right now, Lord, that as this word goes forth, that it will not fall on deaf ears. We pray, God, that you have prepared the hearts and minds of your people to receive from your word on today. We pray, Lord God, that you send your ministering angels to walk up and down the aisles and in between the pews and minister to the needs of your people. Father, we thank you that something will be said today that will, will light a fire in somebody, Lord God, so that they may live a life that is pleasing to you. Father, we thank you. And we praise you for it. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated. I want to take <clears throat> these next few minutes to talk to you on the subject, God's word still speaks, but are you listening? God's word still speaks, but are you listening? I know I, I don't normally do this that often, but today I want you to turn and look at somebody and tell them God's word still speaks. But are you listening? All right. Amen. The word of God is still speaking, but it's up to us to listen. If I asked anyone in here today um, the difference between hearing and listening, most people would not be able to describe the difference. And many will say there is no difference between the two. But I want to take a few moments to point out the difference to you and make you aware of the importance of not just hearing, but listening to God's word. See, hearing versus listening, we got we to think about that. Hearing is uh, the physiological or physical act of processing sounds. It is the process, the function or power of perceiving a sound. It does not require effort on our part or our attention. Sounds happen and you hear them. If I smack this table, everybody would hear it because your ears will process that a sound was made. But listening is making meaning of the sounds. It requires focused attention and a conscious effort to understand what is said. It means paying attention to the sound and deciphering or making out what you actually heard. Hearing is involuntary, but listening is voluntary. Hearing involves only the ears. But listening engages the brain to process and interpret the meaning of what has been said. I know you've all experienced a one-sided conversation before. <laughs> Times when someone was talking to you, but you didn't pay attention to what was said. Or perhaps you were the one talking and the other person seemed to be preoccupied with something else and they missed what you said altogether. In most cases, what was said has to be repeated. You know, you ever done that and you be like, now what did I just say to you? Uh, say it again. <laughs> Husbands and wives, I know we had them conversations all the time. I, I, I didn't tell you that. You didn't listen. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Even with your children. What did I tell you to do, huh? <laughs> One-sided conversation. But I need you to understand today that it is important for us to do more than just hear. We need to learn to listen, pay attention and process what is said because listening can save your life. Listening can mean the difference in what you face, but we must be mindful of who or what we listen to and what we take heed of. 
What I'm saying to you is that we need to listen to what God says in his word. The Bible is God's inspired word, and we should use the whole Bible as the standard to test the claims of anything that says that it is true. We need to not only read God's word, but we must apply its principles in our lives. And in this way, it will prevent us from falling prey to the false teachings that are found in this world. We should not treat God's word as just a novel or some other book that we read for pleasure. We need to understand and accept the fact that the Bible is given to us by God himself. And he gave us his word so that we would have a standard to live by. He gave us his word so that we would have insight into our Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave us his word to strengthen our faith and help us to grow in our relationship with him. But we must recognize that God's word is not just something we read. It still speaks to us. It's not something that's in the past tense. It still fits what we face on today. God speaks to us through the reading of his word. He speaks when we study and meditate on it. He speaks when we apply his word to our lives. See, we need to be more consistent in reading our Bible, but we should not only just read the Bible. We need to start studying the word of God, examining the words that are in it, seeking the meanings and the context that's used in scripture so that we can gain a true understanding of what God is saying to us. But we need to do more than just read and study the word. We need to also meditate on the word. This means that we must ponder or think about what God is saying and what it means for us today. See, after the death of Moses, God spoke to Joshua, and this is what he said, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in in it then you will be prosperous and successful see we must finally apply the word we read it we study it we meditate on it but then we've got to apply it this means that we are to obey God's commandments we are to obey what his word says we are to follow the instructions that are found in it it means taking heed to what is written in the word of God so that we don't falter in our walk as we look at Paul's second letter to Timothy, he was writing to Timothy from prison. Paul is in his final days, and he knows that he will be executed for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he firmly believes in the gospel, so he doesn't mind laying down his life. So Paul, Timothy was Paul's most beloved and trusted assistant. So Paul is passing the torch to Timothy and challenging him to continue the work, to imitate him, and to stand firm in Christ. He wanted Timothy to stay rooted in scripture and stick with what he had learned at when he first believed. Paul charged to Timothy was to step into the gap and continue the mission. In chapter 3 of 2 Timothy, Paul urges Timothy to stand firm in the truth of the scriptures. He's telling Timothy that this because the scriptures are true. They are inspired by God, the very breath of life for all who seek to walk in God's ways comes from the word of God. God breathed these words out to men and then they put pen to paper. See, these verses are Paul's last words to Timothy before he issues his charge to him. You know the one that we like to say, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. See, Paul was telling him to stand firm in it. This is, this is all going before he tells him to preach it. In our text, Paul says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what's right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. He wants him to know that the inspired word of God is absolutely sufficient for all the things that are 
were necessary to know and glorify God and to experience redemption in Jesus Christ. He wanted Timothy to know that he had everything he needed to navigate the difficult assignment of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you got the word, then you got everything that you need to be able to minister. Timothy is challenged to maintain a close relationship with the word of God. Paul tells him of the benefits that come from that relationship. He's reminded that it is the scriptures which have taught him what he knows about God. It is the word of God that has fed him, and it's the word of God that has led him to this point in his life. See, the scripture has been foundational in making him the man of God that he is. Is and, and he wants him to continue in what is written in the word so that he will make progress as a believer and as a man of God. See, I need you to understand today the importance of the Bible, the word of God. It's unlike any other book in the world. Yeah, other books may contain some truths and they may have some wisdom and they may offer some help, but there's only one Bible that it includes the very word of God himself. There's only one book that gives us the heart of God, and that is the Bible. The word describes how the spirit of God worked through the biblical writers to write God's word entirely and exactly. And, 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 and Peter put it this way. He said, no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. Man didn't do this on their own, for prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And because God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and completely perfect, his word will, by its very nature, have the very same characteristics. His word is infallible. It's incapable of error and it's authoritative meaning it is completely trustworthy see the word of God is sufficient for us to live a life of faith and service to God and Paul knows full well that the power of God's word especially what to teach to rebuke to correct and train he knows that the power of God's word will allow you to carry that out if Timothy stayed connected to it and studied it it, he'd be equipped for every good work. What I'm saying is it's time out for us to stop saying uh, I, I can't do this task. If you got God you got everything you need to complete the task. Whatever the ministry that God has called you to, you can do it because God will equip you to do it. I need you to understand that the word of God gives us all the tools we need to go to work for the master. And as we read the word of God, we will discover that there are some things that we are to avoid. And, and then there are some things that we are to make sure we do. And, and as we obey the word of God, we will find ourselves thoroughly equipped to do the Lord's work in this world. See, see what I need you to understand is that God is still speaking to his people, but we are, are, but are we listening to him? See, too often we sit in church and we, we hear the word go forth, but by the time you get to the parking lot, you don't even remember what was said. It's time out for sitting in church just to say you went to church on Sunday. It's time out for doing these types of things. It's time to learn how to listen to what God is saying through his servants. It's time for us to get into the word and see the importance of listening. Uh, in Deuteronomy 30 and verse 20, it says, Love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him. If we flipped over into Psalm 85, verse eight we see he said I listen carefully to what God the Lord is saying for he speaks peace to his faithful people if we were to flip back over to first Samuel chapter three we'll see that when Samuel was in there and he kept hearing something call him and Eli told him to go back 
and say, speak for your servant is listening. And what did he do? He went right on back in there. And when he heard his name again, he says, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If we looked over in Psalm 119 and verse 9, it tells us, how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to the word of God? I want you to know today that you got to pay attention to what the word is saying. You need to obey the word. You need to live by the word. We need to take heed to what's written in God's word. I want you to know the word still speaks, but are you listening? The word still instructs us, but are you listening? The word will correct you, but are you listening? You'll get strength from the word, but are you listening? See, the word will guide you, but you got to listen to it. The word will keep you, but you got to pay attention to it. The word will warn you, and you need to take heed to it. The word, the word is the word that we need. It's the word that he gave. It's the word that we trust. It's the word of God. The word of God still heals. The word of God still delivers. The word of God still saves. The word of God still destroys the yokes of bondage. It's the word of God that we need to rely on. So the word is speaking, but are you listening? When God says, praise me, are you listening? When God says, pray, are you listening? When he says, love your enemy, are you listening? The word of God is still speaking, but are we listening to it? God's word still speaks, but our problem is our listening, our lack of attention span. If it ain't what we want, you just, yeah, you block it off. I, I can tell you now, I, can, I think I've shared this before. Sitting in the house, I, I grew up with a house full of siblings, and I'm the oldest. So I learned how to ignore sounds <laughs> early in life. And I, I can recall times my husband and my son, they'd be in the house and they'd kick, 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 doing all this other stuff, and I'm, I'm in my own little world. And they didn't ask me a question, but I ain't heard nothing they said. I hear the noise going on over there, but I didn't know they were talking to me because I wasn't paying attention. We need to stop being that way with God. We'll listen to the things the enemy says over the things that God says. We got to learn how to flip that thing around and learn how to tune out the enemy and hone in on what God is saying to us. Amen? The problem that many of us have is that even though we may read God's word, we don't feed on God's word. You ever had, you're hungry, but you don't know what you want, and you're eating all these different things and nothing seems to satisfy? That's what we need to be like with the word, get in that word. Because we eat all this other junk, we need to give up that junk, we need to go on a word fast. You know, we, we ain't taking nothing but the word in. You know, give us some time where we can seek the Lord. Set everything else aside. We don't feed on it. We just want to get through it just to say that we read. But there's going to come a time where we need to come to him for sustenance. We need to find that sustenance that's, that is in the word. We need to move beyond just reading and get to the place where we seek nourishment and guidance from the word. Jesus said in Luke 11 and 28, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. So what I'm saying to you today is make the effort to actively listen to God by studying his word and applying the principles found in it to your life. The word still speaks, but we've got to listen to it. Amen. Come on and stand on your feet.
The word still speaks. As I said, the word still saves. So if you're in the house today and you have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, we want to give you the opportunity to come to him. I remember the song, To the Utmost, Jesus Saves. And I want you to know today he still saves. Like I said, the word still speaks. Jesus still saves. He still heals, delivers, and sets free. And you can be free today. Will there be one that will come today? If you're here today and you desire to make Ebenezer your church home, we ask you to make your way to the altar at this time. And if you're here today and you desire prayer, if you will make your way down to the altar, we will meet you there. Is there one? If there is no one, we're gonna we're gonna pray, and then we're gonna give our benediction as we prepare for the funeral services of Sister Oni Mae Southern. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who is the word. And we ask you, Lord God, to continue to deal with us concerning your word. Give, a, give us that hunger and thirst for it, Lord God. Give us the desire to seek your face. Help us, Lord God, to grow in our knowledge of you and, 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 and to crave your word and your presence, Lord God. God, we, we were talking this morning how in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures set forevermore. God, give us that desire to seek your presence, Lord God, so that we will experience the fullness of joy. Give us that, Lord God, that hunger and thirst, Lord God, so that we will receive those pleasures that are at your right hand. Father, we ask you right now to continue to deal with us, Lord God, throughout the coming days and weeks, Lord God. Help us to call on you even the more. Help us to seek you even the more. Help us, Lord God, to maintain a stronger relationship with you. Help us to walk more closely with you, Lord God. Help us to rely on you no matter what we're facing. Help us to call on your name even, even when we feel like everything is all right. Help us to call on you still, Lord God. Give us that, that heart of gratitude so that we'll say thank you, Lord, that we'll begin to thank you for the good things, Lord God, and we'll even thank you when we're going through the bad things, and that we'll be able to lift up your holy name, Lord God. We'll be able to cry out to you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord God. And Father, as we prepare to dismiss this service on today, we pray for the family of Sister Southern, as they prepare to come for this homegoing celebration. We pray, Lord God, that you will comfort them, Lord God, like only you can. We thank you, Lord God, for sending the right people in their pathway, Lord, to witness to them and let them know that, that, you, uh, that you care about what they're going through. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We pray, Lord, that as we leave this place on today, that we will arrive at our next destination and find everything well. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen. Amen. amen, amen. And amen again. Amen.